Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, are you ready for us to call for that daily bread? Hey, it is called daily bread. Jesus said we should make that request. Give us today our daily bread. Praise God. So, are you ready to call it for an expected miracle? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread today in Jesus' name. Angels, bring that that belongs to me right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Expect a miracle today. Why? Because God is committed to seeing to it that your needs are met. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's go into today's broadcast. Father, we bless you this day, Lord. Thank you for your spirit that is our teacher. And Jesus, you said the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. And he will guide us into all truth. So today we expect nothing less from that which we believe you said concerning the Holy Spirit. And right now I declare every body is lifted Yokes are destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Now, yesterday I was sharing with you. Now, we've been talking about contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. There is a faith that was delivered to the saints. And we got looking at how, because if you're walking with the Lord, one of the things that must take place in your life is your growth. And we're looking at something in Ephesians chapter 4. Yesterday I was showing you, you know, he, he gave all the ministry gifts. And this is the reason for the perfecting of the saints. Ephesians 4 from verse 12 now. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And I explained that to you yesterday and day before yesterday. Then he says, till we all, not us, every one of us that believe in Jesus Christ. Now, don't take this for granted and just think, oh, ha, imagine everybody in the world that believe in Jesus Christ. Hey, listen, listen. When it comes to certain things of faith, you can only speak for yourself. And this is the truth. Don't look at the other person and wonder, is this person growing? Or, or No, think about you. Are you growing? Now he says, till we all come to the unity of the faith. So the question is, are you as an individual growing, coming to the unity of the faith? How, how do I know I'm coming to the unity of the faith? I'll tell you. Now, when, you know, you know at that young stage, see, you, you, uh, you, you feel what you know, you know, sometimes say, oh, my, my, my pastor teaches very well, you know, you know, ah, you know, we've been, we've gone through all those stages. You, you just feel what I know other people don't know. So, so you feel special, you see, you, you just feel, wow. And then, uh, and then you get to a point where you realize that, come on, this, this other people, I think know nothing. They know some stuff that I'm not aware of. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. And then that begins to humble you a bit. Because you just think sometimes you're the only one God is working with. Until you get to hear certain testimonies and you're like, whoa. <laughs> and they humble you. I'm telling you, listen, everyone who walks with God. And, and this is the point. It's not about the, the, what we call revelations. Now, when I mean revelations, they are just understandings. That, but uh, real revelation is the one that the Holy Spirit himself gives to you. As long as it is shared by a man to you, it's knowledge. It's knowledge. See? Now, 
when when you truly begin to walk with the host and, and you see that's the difference when the holy spirit teaches you stuff it carries with it a great measure of humility you will never find a man who learns from the holy spirit and he's proud you will never find such a man when you see a man that has so much knowledge in the things of god and you see pride walking in his life relax you will soon discover the book he's reading and getting his revelations from you will soon discover it because it's not from the lord it may be right you know but it's not from the lord the moment the holy spirit is your teacher you will be humble because the things he teaches you truly is laced with humility so it, it, you see when god speaks to you just like ezekiel say god said to me stand up on your feet and then next thing he said and the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet everything the holy spirit is teaching you about he empowers you to be that thing that he's teaching you that's how it works that's why i say when the holy spirit is your teacher you will you will naturally realize that you are a humble person you can't be proud because his words itself they are humbling i'm telling you the truth you will think you know something and then he just shows up and just bust that bubble for you and then you realize lord just like job said i have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear now my eyes see you <laughs> i humble myself that's what job said praise god so so now he says Till we all, so when you realize as an individual, you are growing into the unity of the faith, then you suddenly begin to realize that, hey, these guys are not altogether ignorant like I used to think. They know something. Oh, it's just that they are coming from a different angle from where I'm coming from. But hey, we are saying the same thing. Praise God. Now, we then begin to look out for real believers amongst us. Now, how do you know real believers? Those who bear the testimony of Christ. Now, what do I mean the testimony of Christ? I'm not talking about those who read Bible. Praise God. No, I'm talking about those who have real testimony of Christ. Those who actually hear the Holy Spirit teach them. Now, that's the testimony of Christ. See, it's a testimony of Christ. Because the Bible said the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, what does that mean? The spirit of prophecy. Now, when the spirit of prophecy comes upon you, what you are going to be saying or knowing, see, but, but because it's the spirit of prophecy, so you are empowered to profess. You are empowered to speak. Then you realize that everything you will be saying will be the testimony of Jesus. That's what it is. So anyone who is speaking by Christ, anyone who is speaking by the Holy Spirit, he is prophesying. Now prophesying doesn't necessarily mean you stand up and say, thus saith the Lord. Oh, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Hey, you can be gisting with a friend and you are prophesying. Why? Because you are speaking from your spirit, man. See, you don't have to be spooky about it you know you know oh hold on hold on hold on the, the spirit is about to speak through me now can you just listen to me no 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 we get to that point where every word that proceeds out of our mouth is what we receive from him in our day-to-day -day affairs brothers and sisters that is the growth we're talking about so you 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 get to that point and then you you hear this this fellow sharing his testimony of Christ. He said, that's what's going to cause the unity. The, the unity is not going to be caused by someone coming, so let's form, you know, hey, you know, like we have the various Christian bodies and then the leaders come together and then they say, you know what? Um, I think we should all come together under one roof to show that we are united. That's not how it works. <laughs> you, you know, many times people have tried to do that and it ends it ends in chaos why because that's not what the lord has ordained the unity of the faith is when you 
are receiving from the Holy Spirit. I am receiving from the Holy Spirit. Now, when we come together, we may not have liked ourselves before, but the thing that joins us together is that we bear the testimony of Christ. So when we meet and begin to speak his testimony, then we realize that, oh, we're saying the same thing. And then we realize that the love of God indeed is shed abroad in our hearts. So the unity of the faith is coming to the place of love and coming to the place of love, it's with knowledge. I, I want you to understand this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So it says, still, we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Hey, do you know what that is? It says, till we come to the knowledge of the Son of God. The knowledge of the Son of God is eternal life. Do you know that? Jesus speaking to the Father in John chapter 17, he said, this is is eternal life that they might know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent now this is Jesus talking to the father and he says this is life eternal the knowledge of you the father and then the knowledge of your son Jesus Christ so when he says here that till we come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God he said he said now we we come into that place where we walk in eternal life see eternal life walks with knowledge thank you Holy Spirit unto a perfect man you see that now you remember he says for the perfecting of the sin then he says till we come to that place of perfection meaning it is possible brothers and sisters he has said till we are perfect praise god when is this oh no 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 this must be when we get into heaven you know you know, you, you 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 get to heaven's gates and then you actually qualify to be at heaven's gates and then the angels will now stand there and say oh mr james joseph yes sir come out and then you now stand with your white robe and they say now we wear you the robe of perfection. And then they put on that special robe on you. And they say, now you are back. No, sir. No, sir. I've told you before. The knowledge you carry from me here is the same knowledge you carry everywhere you go. If you, if you don't know stuff here, you can't know it even when you die. You wouldn't know it in the realm of the spirit. You wouldn't know it. You would need to be taught. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because... And this, this might be funny, but it's true. Because you are your mind. I've told you before, the spirit we carry is the Holy Spirit. Now, this is what happens when a man gets born again. The Bible says you renew your mind. You know what you're doing? You're renewing your mind. You are, you are turning your being into oneness with the Holy Spirit. So re you renew your mind by the things the Holy Spirit is sharing with you. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So that's what happens. So when he says you get to perfection, what's he talking about? He's talking about that place where you get to. Your mind has become one with the Spirit of God. I'm telling you, he says, is that possible? Very possible. Your mind has become one with the Spirit of God. Listen, you, you, you hear the whole Lord speak to you, and then you, you know it, it. Let me give an example. It's just like, you know, you want to pray, you want to pray, you want to do something. Say, Lord, I'm thinking of doing this. Lord, help me. I want to make this decision. What should I do? What should I do? And sometimes you even fast for three days. And then you begin to sense the mind of God. Say, oh, the Lord wants me to do this. Fine. And then you grow to another point where you're like, oh, I want to do this. And then you realize that, okay, let me pray. And then you start praying. After one hour prayer, like, oh, I think I know what I want, what the Lord wants me to do. And then you go and do it and it's right. And then you grow to that point where you say, Lord, I'm thinking of doing this. And then it just comes to your spirit. Yes, that's what the Lord wants you to do. Oh, wow. And then you grow to that point where it's like, Lord, I'm thinking of doing this. And instantly, you just know. In fact, you don't even say, Lord, I'm thinking of doing this anymore. Because once your mind is thinking about it, you're flowing with the word of the Lord. So as you're thinking about the words are coming from the Spirit of God, so both of you merge and that thing is done. That's the growth he's talking about. That's the point of perfection he's talking about. Praise God. So now he says, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness 
of Christ. Think about it. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness. So you see the fullness of Christ. Not, not the half fullness. No, the fullness of Christ. He said, till we come unto that measure of that stature of that fullness. So when you see Jesus and you say, this is the manifestation of the personality of God. It means every one of us, you look at us and you say, this is the personality. Not by the suit we wear, no. Not by the way we conduct ourselves, no. But you look at us true and true by the words we speak, by the things that go through our minds. You said, look, I, I can't differentiate you from Jesus. I, I just can't. Is that possible? Yes, it is. And you've got to believe this because my time is up today. Praise God. So you've got to believe it. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, we bless you today. Your glory is being manifested in us. And we walk in your truth every day. Thank you, sweet Spirit of God. We are manifesting this life and it's working in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.